December 20th is uh, <clears throat> called to order. First order of business is the Pledge of Allegiance. To the flag of the United States of America. Roll call, please, Kate. Casper? Here. Fearborn? Here. Bryson, Shannon, here. Knudsen, Williams, here. Emery, here. Thank you. Uh, agenda changes or re um, Actually, I skipped over. I was looking at the minutes as opposed to the agenda. Yeah. Introduction of new planning commissioners. Mr. Williams. I have a new planning commissioner I'd like to introduce. Yes, please do. Don Williams has come to us. And uh, I don't know if you want to say a few words, but we're, you're certainly we're glad to have you here. Thanks, uh, we welcome you. Very excited to be here. Right. Very grateful to be here. Hello. Welcome aboard. Thank you. Now, agenda changes or revisions? No. Minutes, commissioners, you have been sent electronically the minutes of the last meeting two months ago, uh, October 18th. Are there any additions, corrections, deletions? Hearing none, a motion for approval. Mr. Chair, I move we approve the minutes for October 18, 2011. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Minutes are approved. Public comments on non-agenda items. The uh, <clears throat> only agenda item tonight is a discussion under new business of a year in review. There are no final orders, public hearings, or old business. Is the public wish to address anything at this point in time? No? Okay. Uh, there are, as I indicated, no final orders or resolutions or written communication, no public hearings, and old business, which then brings us to new business. Good evening, everyone. Our last meeting of the year, and we wanted to do something. We thought about doing some training or some kind of educational thing for you, but it's so late in the year, so close to the holidays, that we thought it would be more interesting to kind of look back on 2011 and reflect on what was accomplished, what was maybe not quite accomplished. And so we thought we'd go month by month and, and just kind of look back. So, starting out in January, in January, you re-elected Richard Emery as chair for, I think, the third year, maybe fourth year, and Eric Fearborn as the vice chair, and Doug Bryson joined the planning commission in January, and also you discussed what you were going to do for this year, and leading the list at that time was rezoning all of our park and open space land that hadn't been rezoned yet, and we also talked about updating our natural hazards ordinance. Then in February, you held a hearing to consider rezoning the old Oregon Coast Community College property down in Taft. It was requested to be rezoned from single family residential to Taft Village Corps. You recommended approval of that and the city council approved it in April. Then later that month, you heard an appeal of a staff decision approving a vacation rental dwelling down in the Taft neighborhood and you upheld staff's decision on that. Going on into March, um, in March you were looking at a request for a variance for a, a garage setback on Southwest Anchor Avenue next to the beach stairs um, adjacent to the Olivia Beach neighborhood and it was denied when you found it didn't meet the criteria and subsequently the property owner did redesign the orientation of that house and you, if you drive on Anchor Avenue from time to time you'll see that house is pretty close to being finished hmm. and so the way they redesigned it is they came in from the street with a side side loading garage hmm. So, and you've also seen this um, property from time to time in photos when we've discussed the geological setback from the bluff. 
So um, later on that month, in March, you discussed signage for businesses with drive-up, like coffee kiosks, and you didn't take any action on it. It was just an informal discussion. We may see that back at some point in time. That that question comes up from time to time, but there's no, it's not on our schedule at this time. Then in April, um, you held two hearings. The first was another appeal of a staff decision for a vacation rental dwelling that we had approved. And this one was in Northwest in the Wacoma Beach neighborhood. And you upheld staff's decision and you added a condition to that uh, approval. And it was regarding some parking. The second public hearing for that month was to look at the Taft Fire Station um, on Southeast Highway 101. A portion of the property was zoned single family and they were asking for it to be rezoned to general commercial so that they could construct their fire training tower. You recommended approval and the city council approved the rezoning in May. And as a follow-up, this is a picture from October. It was underway at that time. It's a lot more underway, I believe, and it's scheduled for completion in the spring. So that's underway. And in May, you started um, discuss discussing adopting final orders and um, what does it mean when you adopt a final order? What are you actually saying when you adopt a final order? There was a lot of discussion about that, and you wanted to include a policy on that in your rules and procedures, which you did later, a little later in the year. Then later in May, you held two public hearings. The first one was to consider a conditional use permit for a Dutch Brothers Coffee at Northwest 6th and Highway 101. You did approve that, and... Um, it hasn't happened yet. That's it's a it's an approved land use decision. Um, it's good for two years, and we'll see. It could they could come in for a building permit at any time. And the second hearing was it was an appeal of a staff decision approving a vacation rental dwelling in a commercially zoned condominium development, and um, that was quite a lengthy hearing as you might recall um, you did uphold staff's decision for approval and in a follow up the um, the city's decision was appealed to Luba but then ultimately it was um, it was dismissed the, uh, the appellant who had appealed it also asked that it be dismissed and I think they worked it out they, they worked it out and that's all we know so it mm -hmm. At this point, we don't know whether it's... Have they applied for a vacation loan to one permit? It's an, it is a city... The city's decision is that it has been approved, um, but the license has not been... The license has not has been ...has not issued. been applied for. I okay. don't know. Once we issue an approval on a vacation rental dwelling, I don't know, do they have a certain period of time to ask for a license? Okay. So it's an approved land use decision. So. Okay. But no license yet. So then in June, we um, continued discussion about the policy about final orders, and you did adopt a change to your rules and procedures to clarify what is meant when you adopt a final order. You um, basically, and this is probably more for um, Don's benefit than anyone else's, but the policy says that final orders and final recommendations will report the findings of the commission explaining how the decision relates to the evaluation criteria. The final order will include the vote of each member and briefly state the basis for any minority vote. And this policy clarifies that the vote on a final order is not meant to be a second vote on the issue um, because the intent of a final order is just to accurately reflect the findings and the decision made by the majority. So even if you voted no on a decision, you can vote yes to adopt a final order. Then later on that month, you held a public hearing to consider a conditional use permit to expand the Ocean Lake Elementary School, and that was approved. And if you drive by on 22nd at any point, you'll see that um, that project is well underway. This is not a, not a very recent photo. It probably looks quite a bit different than, than that at this point. So then in July, you held work sessions to talk about the upcoming um, ordinance amendments, which happened in August. 
and the first at the first August meeting you began discussion on those proposed ordinance amendments the first one had to do with um, allowing attached single-family residences in the R1 zones this is where we looked at three different examples this one is a duplex owned by one person on one lot this is a two unit condominium that could be owned by two separate people and this is an attached two attached single family dwellings so there's a lot line right down the middle <laughs> and they're on individual lots the idea being that they're all equivalent this third this third version though was not previously allowed in the R1 zones and the ordinance amendment made it so that you could have that type of a house in an R1 zone the next um, the next thing we talked about w were some changes to the sign ordinance those didn't didn't go on to city council because they needed some more work to do with a-frame signs and non-conforming signs so we expect to bring those back to you in 2012 we also changed our public notice requirements a little bit to uh, to codify our practice of notifying to 250 feet around the property we also made some changes to the code to allow staff to make changes to property ownership and and address throughout the year which has worked out really well actually um, we've made several changes when when a property owner now calls us and tells us that they don't own it anymore or they've moved and have a new address we can quickly verify it with the assessor's office they return an email to us with the new address and we change it in our system and it's all good so we're we're that that's it's sort of more of an administrative thing but we're we're pleased about it and it's good customer service so the next ordinance amendment had to do with natural hazards this went this was quite an involved uh, ordinance amendment um, basically it was to codify the setback of 60 times the annual erosion rate which is established in a geotechnical report plus five additional feet also we were asking that some newer coastal erosion maps be adopted um, in the in the final adoption by City Council um, the amendments also included what what information must be contained in a geotechnical report um, and and that was just recently adopted by City Council on December 12th I believe so it hasn't taken effect yet it'll take effect in January and then we'll have some more amendments next year that that required amending the comprehensive plan so they had to be deferred until next next time around but I think we did make some improvements to our ordinance and if you have some any specific questions on that it is one of Deborah's favorite things to talk about so I have heard <laughs> so and this is just a map showing some information that we provided during those hearings that illustrate the coastal erosion hazard maps so then at the second meeting in August you you heard the the second group of proposed amendments the first oh, and this is this was the same property that I had shown you before where the house is just about finished next to the Olivia Beach stairs this is another example of a an oceanfront property so the next um, amendment we were looking at was to make some changes to how we measure building height in flood zones and also a small change to delete the definition of height from the Nelscott plan district which was an oversight from when it was adopted in 2008 uh, you had recommended approval of both amendments but with a limitation on the maximum increase in height for properties in flood zones the City Council after holding um, several hearings on that decided they approved the Nelscott definition to be deleted in September but ultimately they concluded that for the flood zone issue um, it would be preferable to not adopt any changes to how we measure height but to go with the variance procedure instead on a case-by-case -case basis the other things we talked about were some changes to our clear vision standards but that really didn't didn't go I don't think we even had a hearing on that we needed some more work on it so we deferred that to a later time and we may bring that back in 2012 because we do think 
the way that we measure clear vision on corner lots isn't the best that it can be. Um, we also looked at some changes to the commercial design standards to provide some better organization and clarity and you recommended approval of those and the City Council also approved those in September. And then you also looked at rezoning open spaces and parks throughout the city that were not zoned correctly. This is just a screenshot from one of the areas of town that you looked at, sort of the center of town. Um, there were a whole variety of properties. So 32 parcels made up about 250 acres in all. Most of them were owned by the city, but there were also properties owned by the State of Oregon, Devil's Lake Park, um, the Fish and Wildlife Service, and then Lincoln County owned one parcel as well. There was also one privately owned parcel in the Agnes Creek area that the city had traded some land with for better connectivity, and we rezoned that property owner's land to single-family residential. And the City Council approved that in September. Then in September, these are just a couple examples of some parks that exist that weren't, they were not previously zoned park and now they are. So then in September you talked a little bit about revisiting the parking standards in the Taft Village Corps which were first adopted back in 2000 and you agreed that we we do want to take a look at those and see if some changes need to be made after um, several public parking lots have been developed and we intend to bring this back in 2012. Also in September uh, Planning Commissioner Alex Ward left the Planning Commission as he was elected to the City Council. In October you considered a comprehensive plan text amendment to add a transportation policy regarding the Highway 101 project and you recommended approval and the City Council adopted that in November. Then in November and December we had no meetings until tonight and the City Council adopt, uh, appointed Don Williams to the Planning Commission. Welcome aboard. And so that's basically what you did during the year. And then the other things that you may be interested in in follow-up, the Bymart project, which was the subject of a zone change back in 2009, um, opened in November. You probably have all been there. I have. The Samaritan Early Learning Center on Northeast 28th by the hospital was completed and opened in September. This is the uh, Public Works sewer shop at their East Devils Lake Road complex. That is under construction and it's uh, estimated for completion in around February. This didn't go to the Planning Commission, but it did go through a site plan review and we, we notify you of any site plan reviews that are coming up just to keep you updated on any, any uh, commercial development. This is the same type of thing. This is the uh, Rusty Truck Brewery behind the Roadhouse 101. Um, it was completed and had its grand opening in July. There was a parking lot at the LDS Church on Northeast West Devils Lake Road, which you approved as a conditional use permit in 2010. That was completed. Don't have a picture of it, though. The Seahorse Motel, which was uh, damaged last December, is uh, nearing completion on its project. And then the Carson Oil Project over on um, Southeast East Devils Lake Road, um, is underway at this time. And other things um, that you might be interested in, we give you a monthly report on building permit activity. We've taken in um, to date around, we've taken them in, it doesn't mean they're issued, they're in various stages, but we've taken in around 200 building permit applications, which includes all new construction, remodels, demolitions, and sign permits. And then other administrative reviews, which generally you would not see or maybe even be aware of unless they were appealed, but are also things that you'd be interested in knowing about. We've approved three geotechnical hazard reports, all for single-family dwellings. We've approved two property line adjustments, five land partitions, 27 sign permits, seven vacation rental dwellings in commercial zones, and 30 vacation rental dwellings in residential zones. So that is the year. Thank you very much for Thank your Thank you, Kate, very much. It's nice to, <clears throat> I didn't think we were quite that busy. <laughs> we didn't think so either. Apparently yeah. we were. <laughs> Thank you. Anybody have questions of Kate? 
Thank you. Um, Kate, I have one question. The property that had the variance with the driveway near the Olivia yeah. Beach, is that part of the PUD for Olivia, Olivia Beach or no, not? No, it's not. It's no, it is lots. owned by Olivia Beach, but it is not within the boundary of their planned unit development. Okay. I was just curious. Thank you. Anybody else? Thanks, Kate. Okay. Uh, time for reports and comments. Uh, Community Development Director. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, we, uh, in October, we issued a request for proposals for a vacation rental dwelling uh, consensus builder to uh, uh, convene a group to come up with uh, some suggested uh, changes or improvements, replacement, whatever, of the existing vacation rental dwelling uh, regulations. We uh, the proposals were due at the end of November. We got seven proposals in, uh, and uh, we're in the process of evaluating them now. And we expect to uh, uh, go to the council um, early next year for uh, a selection of the of the winning bidder, and then we'll be off on the the process. What what type of uh, group or whatnot would be? Typical of, of somebody that would have bid on that. What was I mean? What do we've got um, patients do they have that some consulting firms that do sort of general consulting firms. We have a uh, uh, someone from uh, the Willamette University dispute resolution program. We've got the county dispute resolution people, um, consultants who are in the dispute resolution consensus building business, that kind of thing. So it's a uh, it's it's a so it's a good group. We've got some really really good proposals there. I think I think uh, it'll be the decision is not going to be easy. I don't think. And, uh, we're real pleased with the quality of the proposals that we got. But there are people that can look at it all ob objectively and yeah yeah weigh the pros and cons. Fresh look and and one of the big things, of course, is just keeping everybody. Getting getting the the all the all the points of view in together and and proceeding along in a uh, respectful manner and so on. Thank you. None of the none of the applicants have <coughs> specific background dealing with something like vacation rental dwellings. No, yeah. which well, is probably, probably preferable a good thing. that they don't actually. <laughs> probably a good thing. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Anything else? Um, yes. One other thing. Um, uh, Deborah Martin and I attended a, uh, some training in Portland put on by the Oregon chapter of the American Planning Association on legal issues for planners. Uh, quite interesting. One of the most interesting presentations was by an attorney who was involved in a, a, a lawsuit in, involving, I think it was Forest City of Forest Grove. And... Uh, it should be fundamental, but apparently it's not for 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 some people. That uh, he said there are three rules. One is listen to your attorney, apply your ordinance, and treat everybody alike. <laughs> and it was sort of a three strikes and you're out in that particular case. And anyway, there's a multi-million dollar judgment mm. involved in that case. So it was. Uh, uh, I, I hope a wake up call for. Uh, uh, a lot of people. But anyway, it was it was it was, uh, it was very interesting. An all day all day conference on all sorts of, of legal issues, uh, not just the kind of things that gets you into uh, into lawsuit problems, but just how to how to go through the uh, procedures correctly and that kind of thing. So it's quite good. Good. Okay. Thank you. So um, I have, but I'm delegating a third uh, presentation to Deborah. So. Hello, I'm going to give you a brief update on our walk. Mm. <clears> hey, <throat> okay, we have we had a big day on November seventh. We had the uh, project advisory committee meet for the second time and we had two technical review committees also meeting so um, I'm just going to kind of run through this is a picture of the group 
uh, the project advisory committee meeting. We had uh, these members attending, and we also had a lot of additional people, including some of our members from our technical advisory committee. Uh, we wanted them to get involved uh, the evening before. The next day, they had their own meeting. Um, we were talking basically about existing conditions and deficiencies in our current system and facilities for biking and walking. Uh, we also talked about potential design treatments. I'll run through a few later on. And with this group, we were looking for guidance on how we could have the most successful public event. And we have scheduled that for January 28th. I'll talk a little bit more about that later. Um, so these things, as I go through here, I'm not going to go into any detail, but they... Um, this information is all available from the city and um, the reports that are based on these uh, comments are on our website and I'll cover that later also. Our technical advisory committee was basically local organizations, um, uh, agencies that have some input into the planning process. So we had the fire chief, county transit, county planning uh, and, and so forth plus a lot of um, city staff and we added a couple people with design expertise because uh, one of the things that we talked about is trying to make sure that um, our, this all contributes to a nicer looking, more um, welcoming uh, community. And so we wanted to have the design people in there early on. Now the technical advisory committees um, are scheduled only to meet once. We hope that some of these people will stay involved as we go through the process. Some, there, there's some crossover between this and the project advisory committee as well. So again, we were talking here about vision, needs for the plan, um, existing conditions and deficiencies, and potential treatments. And then we had an interesting meeting with uh, people from ODOT. This was our technical advisory committee two. And that group um, brought a, a totally different perspective. They, we were talking about only Highway 101 in this case. We had some great technology. Um, our um, project manager is, um, I'm trying to find his name here, David Helton. He is our, our, our project manager for the TGM program. And he's just been great. He is, uh, he's really... Um, got a progressive attitude and trying to do the best, I think, for Lincoln City and getting ODOT to move a little bit off their business-as-usual approach. So we're really excited about that. We had a PowerPoint presentation showing, featuring this chart, and this is in one of the reports on the website. This shows by each tenth of a mile what we have available in terms of sidewalk, a bike path already, or a bike lane, or a shoulder and um, so this was really helpful. And we combined that with uh, a digital video log that ODOT put together. I guess they do this frequently. They update it. They drive a camera down the highway. And so you can go pick any mile marker you want, and you you can see what's actually out there. So it's it's a great help when you're trying to have a meeting and you're trying to remember what what, what it looks like at a certain location and whether or not you could managed to push that uh, that shoulder out a little ways or something. So it was great. We also used Google Maps, and um, so it was it was quite a good discussion. We got some great ideas from from the ODOT folks. Um, the consultants have proposed certain toolkit options, and they're basically just throwing them out there right now. We haven't gotten to the point where we're recommending anything yet, but uh, they have taken ideas that have been used elsewhere. And uh, we're also making sure that we talk about ADA. Uh, we're talking about things like, this is it from Portland. This is a, a colored bike lane. And, and a bike box at an intersection. I don't know that we're going there, but um, we also talked about lighting and then about wayfinding. Uh, sometimes uh, the bikers who come into town um, especially don't know that maybe we have a facility or there's somewhere that they would like to stop along the way. So we want to do some improvements in that regard. Here's uh, an idea. I mean, this could be Eugene or Portland. I'm not sure which, but... Um, 
it's an instance where uh, the traffic has, is only one way for cars, but the bikes have a way in uh, to go the opposite direction. And it's not about just about bikes. It's also very important that we include facilities for pedestrians. Um, we're looking at ways that we can increase the usefulness of the sidewalks we already have. Um, we have shared youth use path is an idea that we might use. In this case, um, I, Manzanita maybe, they actually changed this from a bike lane to a walking path. We talk about things like how fast uh, can the traffic be moving or, or um, before you really need a separate bike facility. And we talk about the fact that maybe you need a bike facility sometimes when you're going uphill and the, and the bikes can't move as fast as the cars, but going downhill you don't need it because the bikes can keep up with the flow of traffic. We talk about uh, this, the um, different treatments for intersections to make pedestrian crossings safer. In the toolkit are some uh, grade separation ideas. Again, this is one of the more expensive treatments. I don't know that we'll get there, but uh, we may find that that's the best solution in some cases. What, what we've been doing so far is talking about good solutions, better solutions, and then the best solutions. And the good ones tend to be more affordable, but um, do not address the needs as fully as, as the best solutions. This is a Wooner. This is, I'm not sure where this is from, but this is uh, the shared use idea that we talked about, oh, in the past year sometime when I presented the uh, walking and biking plan. Big important event coming up for us. This is our public event number one. And the reason I have the jambalaya cook-off here is not just to catch your attention, but because it's on the same day and it's at the same time. So the, the cook-off is going to be going uh, on on the fourth floor, and we paired our, our event with that so that we can catch people on their way in and out, uh, besides the people who specifically come uh, to talk about bikes and ped uh, planning. So um, it's 11.30 to 2.30 on Saturday the 28th. It's right here in the council chambers. And we'll have several um, different booths set up so that people can go around at their own pace. We'll try to have a very brief presentation on the hour, but the rest of the time people are free to go to those um, stations that interest them. The consultants will be here. David Hilton will be here from ODOT, and your staff will be here. Uh, we want to get people picking up pens and marking on maps where they think something needs to be done or maybe uh, where we might want to apply a particular kind of tool. So we're hoping to have a very interesting day. Uh, we don't have child care uh, provided, but we do have we welcome kids, and we do want to get our youth involved in this process. Okay, here's our website. Here's our web address. Uh, www.lincolncitypedbike.org and you can see on our page it, it does have a heading that got cut off here but um, we have the ma meeting materials and also just kind of a catalog of some interesting news articles that have come up uh, during our uh, planning year. Uh, we have an opportunities to comment, we have questionnaires online and we also have an interactive map for people to use. We have the site in, in Espanol, so we really encourage the Hispanic population to participate. And that's it. Thank you. Questions for Deborah? Thank you. As I've said before, Deborah, thank you so much for shepherding this. And you're making great progress, and it's looking good. I'm really excited. You are, yeah. It's so great. come and join us on the 28th. We'll be in Hawaii, so oh. sorry about that. <laughs> I'll be cooking. Thanks, thanks for pointing that out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, <clears throat> planning commissioners. I'm sorry. Anything else, Richard? No. Uh, we have no attorney. Uh, planning commissioners. Anybody? Um, <clears throat> let me just say a couple of words. This, as everybody knows, is my last meeting after eight and a half years. 
I was trying to count the number of commissioners that have come and gone, and I just got totally lost. But uh, <clears throat> we've had three Kates. We've had four Debras. We've only had one Richard. And I just want to say what a pleasure it's been working with the staff and working with the fellow commissioners and people in Lincoln City. You have a jewel of a planning department here. They are helpful, they're courteous, they're great to get along with, and it's been a wonderful experience for me. I've enjoyed it immensely. Uh, okay, public comments on uh, anything? Okay, then we are adjourned. No, we're not. No, we're not. No, we're not. No, we're not. you got to look at your... <laughs> what? Sure. It says... Public comments on non-agenda items not involving a public hearing. Right. And That's the last thing. To say huh? Future agenda items, right? The next meeting. Oh, okay. That was. I'm sorry. You're in a hurry to get out of here. <laughs> sorry about that. You're right. That is. And we, we, yeah, our next meeting is January 3rd um, at 6 p.m. We'll be uh, electing officers, uh, initiating discussion on goals and projects for the coming year and a review of rules and procedures. One thing, uh, Mr. Chair, you asked me at the beginning of the meeting if there was a agenda changes, and I lied. There, There's one change I want to add. I want to uh, uh, just cut in here for a little, briefly and we adjourn. have a, I guess, a mutual uh, appreciation here. Just tell you how much uh, I've appreciated having having you serve as, as chair or as, as a planning commissioner and as chair. Um, for many of you don't know, uh, Rich Emery was appointed by the city council on August 11th, 2003, and uh, to complete the unexpired term of Sydney Hatch. And his first meeting was August 19th, 2003. He was appointed vice chair in 2007. He's been chair for four years, 2008, 2009, 2010, 2011. And while you had a hard time figuring out how many planning commissioners you've served with, Kate did not have a hard time oh, good. doing that. <laughs> 30-something? Counting, counting, not counting the ones here, the, the, the other six who are on the planning commission now, you served with 19, or actually 20 others. Huh. Um, not counting these. Not counting not these. Counting a total of 26 them. others. Okay. Rick Brissett, Gary Ellingson, Therese Morris, Lenny Nelson, Buzz Berger, Jim Coos, Diane Dissey, Joe Lovato, Polly Hale, Char Brown, Tim Crenshaw, Richard Meehan, Randy Butts, Christine Carnes, Sharon Cannon, Jim Daniels, Dick Anderson, Gretchen Emerson, and Alex Ward. So of the total of 26, eight of them have gone on to the, to the city council. So, uh, and the only one I don't remember is DeVito. Is who? who? What was the one you said after about fourth or fifth down there? Fourth or fifth down? From from the top. From the top. Uh, after Jim, Jim Coons in that area. There was T Therese, no, Lenny really Nelson, Buzz Berger. Keep going. Jim Coons. Keep going. Diane Dissey. Keep going. Joe Lovato. I do not remember yeah, he didn't being serve, on the commission. He didn't serve very long. I do not remember. That, that Everybody served, else I remember. He served very briefly. So. Yeah. And I also should point out that uh, Mr. Emery is from the UGB. He's not, not a city resident. We have two places on the city council for people from the UGB, and uh, he has uh, served well in, the, in that capacity. Um, I, I, I need to thank Kate for putting all this together, too, all this information. She did, she's uh, uh, appreciated it very much. In the little over eight years you've been on the uh, Planning Commission, you've dealt with 35 uh, ordinance amendments, mm. including uh, commercial design standards, wind and solar energy, urban agriculture, mixed use in commercial zones, geologic hazards, tree protection, vacation rental dwellings. Two annexations, 36 appeals, 53 conditional use permits, 12 comprehensive plan and zoning map amendments, including the rezoning in Ocean Lake and Nelscott District, 
rezoning the areas that we annexed on the west side of the lake from the county R1 zone to various city zones, and most recently the park and open space rezoning. Um, 30 PUD, planning and development hearings. And these are all these things, hearings, obviously. Nine subdivisions, in, uh, two street vacations, and 47 variances. Mm. It's been a, an interesting ride for you, I'm sure. <laughs> I just want to say I, I, I really appreciate uh, the leadership that you've shown, uh, the respectful way you've chaired the meetings and uh, kept them going along. I know how difficult it can be to uh, let people have their say while keeping them on track, and uh, I think you did an excellent job of that. And, again, the respectful way people were treated I think was just wonderful and I think sets, sets an example for, for the future for all of us. Um, your questions and comments were, I thought, were always insightful and incisive and also very helpful to the discussion. So I really appreciate the uh, service you. you've given. You. And I'm going to ask the mayor to take over at this point. Mr. Chairman and commissioners, my role tonight is to deliver a thank you, a public, very public um, thank you from the city council as well as from the uh, citizens of Lincoln City to uh, Richard Emery for your many years uh, of service and leadership on this planning commission. Um, it really is appreciated. It's seldom um, gets to he who serves as an appreciation, but for us watching, it's appreciated. And, you know, I, I have to tell you that you're the only individual that I've ever known that has actually served on a commission long enough to actually be term limited out. So uh, that seems to be an, an unusual note. And so, uh, again, thank you. A sincere thank you. Um, it's not easy uh, giving of yourself and, you know, every month. And uh, so we appreciate the, the efforts you. made. Thank you. Thank you. And we have, actually have a suitable for framing, you know, plaque. Do we have room for another hanging, Patty? <laughs> Yeah, we do from the from the staff, the planning department staff. We do have a, a handsome parting gift and, uh, <laughs> bring up to give you, and, th and then you can adjourn the meeting. A gold-plated gavel. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Thank you, Richard. Thank you very much. We're adjourned. <clears throat>